This video is just going to show you a different game and how they used a button in order to um, start their their games. And so one thing I do want to mention is they have this introductory screen, which is um, recommended to have, and they've created that as a directions world. And then we click the run button, and when I click the start button, it's going to move to a different world. And so their objective here is that you have two players, player one and player two. And as I move around the screen with um, the WASD or the left or right arrows, you want to get to the other side of the screen and try to capture the other person's flag. Now this person did um, manage to get the flag, so to speak, to stick to the person. And I know some of you guys were kind of working on how you might do that. I'm gonna, I would have to study the code a little bit. I don't know why. Sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't. But when the other player reaches over the halfway mark, then um, the flag gets reset and they get a point. And so then it starts all over and they try to go back and capture the flag from the other side. And then if they can manage to pull the flag to their side, then um, they win a point. And then you have this end screen, which is a winning screen. So um, in the directions for your game, remember that you have um, a introductory screen, you have basically the game, and then you have an end screen. And so this is a good example of all three components like that. Let's take a look at their code behind the scenes just to see how they are accomplishing this. So remember at the beginning of the game, they have the instructions and they have the start button set. If we take a look at the code, this is the code for their button and this one is different than the other example. They have the act method which runs continuously and the button is just that red button you can see over here. Um, but then they just check the click, and if the mouse is clicked, um, then they will set the world to a new CTF world. So this is another way of getting the world and creating or setting up the new world. So this is kind of like a shortcut. Um, this is an example of nesting methods inside of methods. So they're going to create a new CTF world, and then they're going to set that to the world using greenfoot.setWorld. So that's just another way to manage that. If we go and take a look then at the CTF world, when the new CTF world is created, the constructor is run. That's what new CTF does, is it runs this code. So they create a player, they create the flag, and they set the scores to zero. And if we look at creating player, it's actually creating two players. I would maybe have named that create players, but that's all right. And then they create flags. So they set up the flags and they set up the players at the location that they want. And then they also run the add or have an add score method in the CTF world. This is very similar to Bloodstream. They basically kind of copied that code from Bloodstream. They have a show score and then they have an add score too. They have two add scores because they have two different players is how they set up this particular scenario. So then they also have a show score too for player two is how they've set up this particular game. Those scores are variables for the class, so they need to be defined up here at the beginning of the class. If we take a look at the individual players, player one and player two, you can check to see um, the check press, key press and check collision. The key press is just whether they're using WASD. And then check collision is checking to see if, now here's where it gets a little tricky. They're checking to see if the other player's flag, um, I'm on player one, Right now, I'm on player one, and I'm checking to see if I'm touching flag two, which is the other person, and is on the left side, which means that we're trying to get the flag, you know, I need to move the flag, remember, from one side to the other. So this is how they kind of check for that. And then they have written helper methods, is on left side, is on right side, are helper methods. That's an example of um, what we would call refactoring code or using modularization. And then player two is going to be similar to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at flag one. Flag one is where this person wrote the method to stick to the player, so to speak. So if they're touching player two, um, they have this little routine that they do. And you kind of see it, it is, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, but this was their solution in order to do that. And then their ending screen, when the game is all over, if we go back to the CTF world, 
I'm not sure actually where that screen is at. The directions, I didn't show you the directions screen, so this is actually just showing you that too, um, is literally just text on the screen, okay? Okay, their end game screen in this particular um, scenario is really just written inside the CTF world. They don't have a separate screen, which is fine. You don't have to have a separate screen. What they've done is every time they add a score, they check to see if that score is equal to two. So um, in order to get this game, in order for them to actually run this game or just in order for it to quickly end, basically, um, they set the score level to two. So as soon as one of the two players reaches two, they display that that player wins and then they stop the game. And so this can be altered or changed to make the game more interesting or a little bit more difficult, etc. But that's how this particular person did this game. I will also post this code so you guys can um, look at it and study it and um, use some of that code if you need to for how to get the game to start based upon a button. And that should be good.